You're not above criticism. Until you are done dribbling the ball, you are not above criticism. And that's something that going through this, I had to learn that, okay, even if I have a quote unquote, a legitimate reason why something went wrong, still hear what somebody says because yeah. it, it's an outside looking mm -hmm. in, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of been the mindset shift and just work harder. Good everybody. Today, I got a special guest for you guys. My brother, my teammate, my roommate on the road. Yes, sir. If you know Ben Fika, some people call him the big, big Ben Fika. <laughs> my guy, Terrell Carter. Or TC, it's good, bro. Yes, Appreciate sir. you having on. Always, man. always. So basically, if you know my channel, it's about telling the reality overseas basketball, about how you go through everything as a pro, and just kind of your processes as a pro as you learn the game and yourself. So I want to have TC on, kind of share his side of the story, give another perspective into overseas basketball. Yeah, let's let's get straight into it, man. I know you've told me some stuff about your journey. You started at Division One Fresno State had a tough coach, a lot of stuff going on, yeah. and maybe you didn't have the college career you expected, but now you're a pro. Tell, what would you say to someone who's trying to go play pro who didn't have necessarily the college career that is like, oh, he's a pro? What got you from there to here? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I would say, man, you have to have you have to have a certain level of confidence in yourself. And when I say confidence, it's not delusion. And when I say that, there's a lot of guys who um, think they are above criticism. They think that they're above, um, they're, they, think they're, they're, they think they're better than what they are. And they think yeah. that it's the coach. They think that it's their teammates. They think that it's just a lot of things that isn't true. And, and I was at a point where um, I was somewhat feeling that I didn't do my part when I was mm -hmm. in college. And what I mean to say, um, I had access to a weight room. Was I in the weight room every day to work on my body? Mm -hmm. That was something that I needed to do. Was I getting the extra shots in that I needed to get in? Was I uh, receptive of all the things? There were some things that I know that I could have complained about that were actually my reality. But then I looked at myself and said there were things that I know that I didn't do. For sure. So I would say you have to be realistic. And also you have to run your race, man. It's not... I'm way better, I am a way better professional than I am uh, a college player. And that's not sure. a knock to college. Some players are not meant for college. Yeah, totally. Um, and you just Different have to be game. realistic. Exactly. You just have to be realistic with yourself. And there was a time where at the end I was like, I didn't give it my all. And I'm trying to figure out my way to basically take advantage of the next mm -hmm. step. I think that's so powerful. I mean, a lot of these young hoopers I see these days, <laughs> They just don't take ownership. It's always something, yeah. especially with the transfer portal. I mean, probably looking back, you would have loved the transfer portal being like For this. For sure. I would have loved the NIL. <laughs> right. I loved it would have been a lot of good things. Exactly. Right. But that being said, all I'm hearing in your voice is ownership. And I think that's such a good thing to preach to the next generation is like, especially when your livelihood depends on this now, you got to take ownership. It's not going your way. You better figure it out. And especially, you know the game. Uh, a lot of guys who go overseas, like no matter how your college career is, you're gonna to have to start at a low level. Yep. You have to work your way up. Take me through that process of working your way up in terms of what were the things that got you from your starting jobs to the job you're at now? Because I mean, it's two years in the Basketball Champions League here with Benfica, that's well respected as like, that's yeah, high level sure. European basketball. I'll tell you this about overseas. It's just like any other job and not any other job, but Sometimes it's who you know, not what you know. And sure. when you don't have the connections, what do you have to do? You have to start from the bottom position. And when you start from the bottom position, you climb the ranks until you get to a reputable um, spot. So for, sure. for me, um, after college, didn't really have an agent situation. I had an agent and it was temporary. Uh, I went to my first job, was a month tournament in Indonesia. Um, I went from, yeah, yeah, just yeah, tell yeah, me yeah. about that. I just told him about that. I had uh, 79 I, I, points. How many points did you drop? I had 78, 78 points, <laughs> 9 threes, 41 <laughs> points in the fourth quarter. 78 career yes. high. Is, yes. I don't think anyone yes. could beat a 78 yes. career high. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> um, did that. So obviously my confidence was amazing after that. I actually won the cup there. So mm -hmm. I won that cup. And then I came home and I was still trying to figure it out. Went from there, sleeping on couches, my family's couches, down there sleeping in my car sometimes. Uh, it was a rough little spot after that. 
Then um, I got rid of that agent, got another agent, and he put me nothing but great things to say. He put me in great positions, gave me opportunity, and my first job was in Canada. Mm -hmm. Played in Canada, had great, and this is, I want to say this because this is important, and this is why your channel is important. I had great older players there Vets. that taught me Vets. so much. How to be a pro. Man, man. Um, how, to, how to wake up, how to go to yoga. I was going to hot yoga. Mm -hmm. I was getting up in the morning, they had me go, going with, um, uh, some of the guys had me going and lifting with them. Yeah. And, because I was the youngest, so they're important. teaching me a, a lot of different things that made me become a pro. And uh, even Big Baby Davis was there. Big oh, Baby right. Davis, the one of the funny uh, I mean, stories. He, he going, he's not man. doing too well now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're not gonna talk. But hey, I, I had nothing but a good experience with Big for Baby. For sure, for sure. Um, he he even came into my house one time and gave me a funny story and was like. Yeah. Um, he was like, big fella, where the snacks at, man? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, man, he, he just came over and was like, He thought you were the plug? <laughs> right? He thought I was the plug, right? So, But he was teaching me like, man, you know, I had KG. I had guys that were teaching me certain stuff that, you know, I'm trying to pass down to you, so you got to take yeah. care of your body. I went from Canada to second league Turkey. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, that was a, a, a another, ex no, no, I didn't. I'm sorry, I went from Canada to Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and I was somewhat one of the older players, and I had to get on my own grind and figure out how to take care of my body, how For to sure. uh, get in the gym, like mm -hmm. I told you earlier. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody. That's when I, Australia's when I kind of took ownership mm -hmm. of what it, yeah. what it was to be a pro. Mm -hmm. Went from there, went to second league Turkey, and then I, I seen I can hang with the big dogs, man. Yeah. From there, uh, COVID happened, went to Mexico, had another great OGs as well there. And then I went from Portugal the first time when I was in Deliverance. Yep. And then that was only two months. And from there, man, sky's the limit. Went to Romania, was an all-star. And from that was just, I started taking accountability. Yeah. Um, I think what I'm hearing in your journey too, not to cut you off a little yeah. bit, but like resiliency and adaptability. Man. And, and it's like, people act like this life is glamorous and you're gonna go overseas, you're gonna make all this money and you're gonna, I'm gonna start my first job oh, in a night. Yeah, it yeah, is, yeah, yeah. but you gotta earn you, it. <laughs> exactly, it where we're at now, it. we're reflecting back. Like, yeah. man, there's a lot of great stuff about this life now. But I think back to you know my rookie sophomore year in Serbia, there's a lot of times where I'm yeah. like, I don't know yeah. if do this I wanna work. Do this? Yeah. How much do I love this shit? Yeah. So uh, yeah. I think that's super powerful, especially when you think of young hoopers too these days. It's just they want things to come easy because we're in a, kind of like a, an age where with social media and stuff, it's shown as easy all the time. You're seeing all these workouts, all these high level stuff. And then next thing you know, they're at the D1 colleges and it just, there's this almost like illusion of grandeur about this basketball journey. And I think what you said is, is a great testament to the resilience to, that, it, yeah. that it takes to reach this. But I mean, so. and, and the last thing with that is that you gotta understand something, even me, um, in year five, one thing I had to understand is it's part of being a man, too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one thing that I learned this year, somebody taught me is the crazy, even though I didn't want to accept this, it's a reality. As a man, everything is your fault. Yep. Um, Ownership. And, and, and once you realize that, and these young hoopers realize that it's your choices, and once you start taking accountability for that, you start to see things a lot of different. If you understand that everything is your fault, you're gonna approach things different. Ah, if I know that I can't blame yeah. nobody for this, I'm probably not gonna do this. Right. And and that's the part that even me as a man today, I'm getting better with, yeah. you know? That's dope. Um, so. That's dope. So looking back at your career too, I'm hearing a lot of different cultures. I mean, I'm hearing Australia, what's that called? I'm not sure that Eastern Atlantic something, yeah, some sort of the world. Somewhere down there. I'm, I'm down he, under, right, down, 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 down under. Down I'm here in South America. I'm here yeah. in Eastern Europe. I'm here now Western Europe. I'm here in Asia. Yeah, Asia, Indonesia. So with all that, how was it handling the different cultures and what are some kind of tricks that you do to integrate yourself into a new culture and new environment? Um, I mean, you know me, man. I'm super outgoing. Yes, so, sir. Um, <laughs> It wasn't really hard for me, but the reason why is, um, and I'm sure you understand this too, being overseas, you have to be okay with self. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people aren't okay with sitting down and being by themselves. Mm -hmm. They find, obviously with social media, they find a lot of things that they can distract themselves with, yeah. but overseas you can't run from yourself. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that I did was, I was okay with going to eat by myself. I was okay with going to, going out by myself. Yeah. I was okay with, 
just walking around and, and meeting people by myself. Mm -hmm. And for that, that was that's kind of how I got integrated in the culture, wanting to learn more, whether yeah. it was by being silly and trying to learn the language, yeah. whether it was trying to make new friends there that would mm -hmm. teach me certain things. Mm -hmm. And um, again, uh, I, I, you have to go out on a limb when you're overseas to be able to learn these things, you mm -hmm. know? I think everything you just said kind of speaks to the overseas experience. You're in new cultures, you're alone a lot. And I think since I've met you, one of the things like when I first met you, one of the most welcoming, warm, includes everybody, like makes everybody feel kind of involved in, in both what you're doing and, and as a group. And you said that acceptance of self. And what my next leading question was like, for me, it was really difficult getting used to being alone. I've always had family, friends. Mm -hmm. And so my first year in Serbia, that loneliness kind of consumed me for some time. Mm -hmm. So what were some things that you do, like when you're alone, how do you process that loneliness and understanding and kind of learn how to be okay with yourself? How, how, how do you develop that? Um, that came from my family. I mm -hmm. mean, um, my mom, my dad, um, they always were taught, and my grandma always taught self-pride before any other pride. Yeah. You know, you got to have pride in yourself, how you carry Handle your yourself. business. Handle your business. And, you know, so for me, um, when I went over there, you know, I'm not going to say I was above and I was just so, I was just so not lonely, but mm. I was focused on the task. And, mm. and for me, like, and maybe you can understand this, when, for me, how overseas went for me is I get excited about where I'm going. First, I get anxious. Yeah. I get anxious before so, I go So anywhere. much new, newness right? and like expectation. Just like, oh my God, where I'm going, I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. Then you find out where you're going, you're like, okay, so I'm going to like it, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Then I get there, I get settled, and then I let my personality take over from there. Um, I have great friends, so I'm playing the game a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I don't play as much as I used to, but that was something that kind of got me up until this point, playing mm -hmm. the game with my friends. That's, you know, having that still staying connected back home mm -hmm. and being able to somewhat, can, um, like, Keep those relationships yeah, yeah. together while at least away. you're you're conversating exactly. you have some shared experiences and for me i'm an outgoing guy so i love to get out in the city and mm -hmm. meet new people and go out and mm -hmm. um that's really really big for me yeah. so um just to be social um, yeah. i haven't been anywhere that i can say that i was just isolated mm -hmm. i know some guys have had that experience overseas yeah. so thank god i, I yeah. haven't had that you've been in some good cities i've been some in some good cities, good cities. and not really good cities but i've you made, made them, them good i made them good that's the key trying to find the little nooks and crannies of mm -hmm. things that i can do there so um you know just find this is where you find your hobbies what do you actually like totally. to do you know a lot of guys again when you're at home you don't mm -hmm. have to think about that i can go to my boy's house yeah. i can just go drive distract yourself can, yeah you can distract yourself with a thousand other things yeah. when you're in something that you're comfortable with yeah. so totally i mean so like i said before you've gotten to a very high level what were the biggest mindset shifts you've had to make from your starting point to now like what was the key kind of mindset movement things that have allowed you to jump this much and explain that development process what were some things that like let's say oh i wasn't that confident at the start or i wasn't this way or that what helped you get to this point now i mean i'm always confident man i'm always confident yeah. in my abilities that's if, if i was i mean that, that's fire yeah. i mean that's i mean but even with that being said and my next statement was going to be you still have to be humble in this because mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't an All-American in college. I wasn't uh, an All-American in high school. I wasn't yeah. the top, top of the top. Mm -hmm. And I know that I'm a late bloomer. So, so for me, there was a confidence, but there's also a humbleness. I, I, I'm always asking questions. I'm always picking guys' brains. How do you mm -hmm. get here? What'd you do? And I'm still a student of the game. I'm, I'm a late student of the game because I really didn't watch basketball growing yeah. up. So there's like still an excitement for me, you know, mm -hmm. there's a hunger, there's still a competitive spirit in me that every day, um, for me, my mindset shit was just understanding that each game is a, has a storyline. Yeah. And so when I started approaching it like that, knowing that, okay, how can I create a narrative? Okay, I remember maybe of my first time playing this game. Okay, it's a big over there that they're saying is good. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I Make can a game inside the game. Make a game inside a game. Okay, Fire. we already played them. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, um, he was talking mess last game. Okay, mm -hmm. let me let me make sure I dominate this game yeah. in a different way. For sure. But to answer going back to your question, in terms of me and the mindset shift was kind of just staying humble in this process. You're mm -hmm. you're again going back to what I said in the beginning, you're not above criticism. Mm -hmm. Until you are done dribbling the ball, you are not above criticism. And that's something that even when I, you know, going through this, I had to learn that okay, even if I have a quote unquote 
a legitimate reason why something went wrong, still hear what somebody says because yeah. it, it's it's an outside looking mm -hmm. in, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. that's kind of been the mindset shift and just work harder. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I'm hearing I'm hearing ambition, confidence, resilience, all these things in your journey, and I think what's cool is that translates beyond even this level you're at now. You're at a high level and I hear, let's take it to up a notch again. If, if your life, if TC's life was the best it could be in the next five years, mm -hmm. where would you be? What would that look like? Man. Like what? I, I'm, I'm gonna be yeah. honest with you. In the next five years, if TC does everything right, TC will be at the highest level possible, whether that is NBA, whether that is EuroLeague, whether yeah. that is um, wherever, and mm -hmm. doing what he loves. You yeah. know, I, like I said, I still have that hunger, bro. So I'm not satisfied with, I want to go to the next level. I want to be in these big games. Mm -hmm. I want to be in these big arenas. I yeah. want to do the big things that I know that I feel like I deserve, going yeah. back to that confidence piece. So yeah. that's what that looks yeah. like for me. I think everything you're saying is so like digestible for a young athlete because it takes a certain frame of mind, a certain mindset towards elevation. You can't be scared of the steps. It's all welcoming those growth moments because like, like we talked about before, you played a lot of different countries, a lot of crazy things. Like I, I could have asked you the craziest story of your overseas basketball career, but <laughs> you probably say something nobody would believe. Like, no, for no, sure. he lying, he lying. Sure. So with that being said, man, like that, that's dope. I think a lot of kids and a lot of athletes will resonate with that. And so kind of to sum it all up, I mean, we didn't really hit much on your life here in Portugal and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, but I think the coolest part we've talked about is your mindset, man, because like, I think that's what separates you and what will separate you going forward. And that's, sure. that's so cool. So I was on a podcast about a week ago, uh, Dustin Aubert, you might know him. He used to be assistant coach at Long Beach State and James Perchin, uh, it's the little, the basketball academy. They ended their podcast with me, they said, all right, fill in the blank. Trey Drexel is at his best win blank. So it got me thinking crazy. One to two words or a little phrase. TC is at his best win blank. Confident and energetic. Yeah. And those two things, if you ever watch me play, if I get that first dunk, if, I, if you see me smiling, if you see me like just full on performance mode, that is the two things you can tell there is no, there is no wrong in my eyes in that sense, yeah. and I'm and I'm definitely running on the, I'm jumping, running up and down the court, I'm diving on the floor, when I'm mm -hmm. when I'm there, I, I feel like I'm really at my best. So, yeah. confident, good, and energetic for sure. That's good. Um, I mean, that's probably about it. I mean, I think we covered a lot of things. I think this would be so good for the next generation. I appreciate you coming on, man. Course, brother, I course, think it was simple. Course, I think it was just exactly what, 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 it, what was needed. It would make a difference. If you guys like this type of stuff, make sure you like and subscribe. I'm thinking of bringing on some more guests. I mean, if every guest is going to be as open and honest like my guy TC, sure. I think this will really help you guys. So uh, don't forget, I got, my, I got, a, I got something coming. Man, so I got to let you plug your chair. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Before we end, man, uh, the biggest uh, mistake I made. I gotta let my boy plug his hands. So uh, let, let him know, man. Let him yeah. know. Let the world know. I'm gonna let y'all know that Trey Drexel has inspired me to finally come out of my shell um, and put my personality um, for the world to see. Um, I just started my YouTube channel. He'll put it somewhere magically, somewhere, Francisco. somewhere floating. Mm -hmm. um, and I started this really because of uh, Trey, how he's throughout the year, how he's been consistent with his stuff. That's something that I always struggle with, like, you know, somewhere between being private and, and public. My personality yeah. so much, I'm already giving out so much energy that I'm excited for this new journey, man. So yeah. that'll be coming soon. I got some things that I'll be dropping soon and letting everybody know how that's going. But we're still in the works and that's coming very soon. I mean, if you, if you, if you approach your channels the way you approach your career, man, you're going to be good, bro. Yes, sir. We're I appreciate you, big guy. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I know Wish I could make it easier I can't, I just know right and wrong